What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. <sighs> Good morning, boys and girls. American business interests have set, stepped up to the plate. And they have stated... We're not going to waste all that cheap labor and those refugees in the desert of Sinai. No, fuck that. Let's get the American taxpayers to pay to ship them to the United States to various locations where big business will offer them jobs. They'll lay off their own people, unionized people, and bring in the fucking... Palestinian refugees, ship them in, put them in shitty apartments, cram them into fucking, I, I don't know, con shipping container houses. Fuck it. Make some shanty towns like, like Bill Clinton did in, in Haiti back in the day. Make some shanty towns and bring them in. They're used to living with nothing. So the, so the captains of industry can find some more refugees and some more cheap labor. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. Give us those goddamn slaves, says American big business interest. Yes, plans are being put forward to offer people displaced from Gaza residents permits and jobs in the United States. It's no longer about putting them in tent cities. 2.3 million people in tents in the middle of a fucking desert. Nope. That plan wasn't well thought out. That part of the plan wasn't thought out. We'll just keep bombing the shit out of fucking Palestine until everybody has to leave. And if anybody calls it into question, they're an anti-Semite siding with the terrorists. We'll call them Nazis. We'll silence them. An American big business will lay them off and fire them if they're saying the wrong thing. And why is American big business interested? Is it because <coughs> the Zionists? Not necessarily. What do we want? Big business. Oh, I'm sorry. I got confused. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what you don't, this is why you don't just fly by the seat of your pants in these fucking videos. <laughs> what do you want? Big business. When do we want it? Never. Hi, how are you guys doing? Today is the 13th day of November, 2023. As you can see right down there, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um... <laughs> What do you want? Big business. When do you want it? I'm stupid. Hi, folks. I, I didn't make that up. I'm not making that up. I, I, I did make that graphic. However, I didn't make up the fucking story. The story came out yesterday. It is no longer the plan to just ship them off into the desert and leave them to fucking rot and die. Or, as I figured before... For Israel to be able to use them as a pool of cheap labor slaves to build their fucking casino gambling resort for the fucking mob. They want to build they want to build Havana 1953 on the Mediterranean. Get all that glorious money, all those shekels, baby. Which is the driving factor behind uh, the final. The final solution, if you will, to the Palestinian problem for the Israelis. I make light of this. I'm tired. It's Monday. I worked a bunch on that thing yesterday, and today I have to work a bunch more. I will eventually send, show, show you a picture of it. Um, <coughs> but I got to go back out now while it's, before it's too, too hot. <clears throat> because I used to have... Energy, I talked about this before. I don't have it anymore. I do have enough energy to do this, though. <laughs> what do we want? Cheap labor? When do we want it? Now. <coughs> before I die. <coughs> Whenever. <laughs> <coughs> oh, 
you thought I was making a joke there, but I just, <laughs> I really wasn't. <laughs> oh, God, I'm doomed. Good morning, everybody. It is <laughs> genocide. It's not just for the Zionists anymore. <laughs> Business can get involved as well. Woohoo! But that's nothing new. You killed a million fucking Iraqis with shock and awe for big business. And they will have to kill at least a million fucking Palestinians. I told you that before. And uh, we have a statement out by a uh, Palestinian, uh, uh, by um, Hamas official. Uh, saying they're not going to fucking cede. They're not going to give away the last vestige of their fucking country that isn't uh, a fucking plantation run by uh, house orcs. Now, you say, God damn, Scott, that's racist. No, that's what Israel calls, Israelis call Palestinians, orcs. And that is a direct reference to a particular point in time in our history, and that's exactly what's being what's being done in West in in in, in the West Bank. So, don't say I'm racist. I'm just pointing out facts, boys and girls. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to talk quickly about a bunch of stuff. Uh, mainly, the last American vagabond, to some degree. I will give you some updates, some news on what is happening in uh, Gaza and, of course, the rest of the world. Because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as the last American Vagabond accurately points out, and as I have pointed out for quite some time, the worm has turned, and this is not going well. Uh, for those who uh, espouse all things Zionism and all things glorious Israel, you know, you even got Jenk Uger doing a fucking uh, doing a fucking debate with Reverend Shmuley. Could you imagine, honey? I love you. Would you do me the honor of becoming Mrs. Shmuley? Um, Remember Mr. Shmuley? I told you he, he was a uh, he's a he's a renter he's a renter rabbi, and uh, he's who he's a go-to guy when uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. found himself in a pickle because he was suggesting Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese made COVID nineteen specifically. Uh, uh, they made it so that it wouldn't affect Chinese and Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, eh, eh, uh, bad thing to say when it was being recorded. Once it got out, he had to apologize. And oh, he did apologize. And he hasn't finished apologizing since. Uh, any Jewish person that walks by down and walks down the street, he drops to his fucking knees and puckers up. Um, and he's been doing that ever since. And now, and he did it with Reverend Shmuley, to start off with. And Reverend Shmuley led him through the fucking paces of his apologize arc. And he's still doing it. Oh, Reverend Shmuley was yelling at Jenk Uger. Jenk Uger was yelling at Reverend Shmuley. Here's the point, and I've said this before many times, and I'm going to read something to you that I've said for a while. And people have said, well, Scott... You're the only person I've heard saying that. Nah, well, not anymore. But um, we'll, we'll go through all of that. We'll go through all of that. So some little updates for you. I, I'm just I'm just so enamored with my fucking. <laughs> you know it. It's it's it's. An exaggeration, but it's not. If this campaign continues, there will be 
hundreds of thousands of displaced people from Palestine, from Gaza. Hundreds of thousands of desperate people willing to work hard and all they got to do is pack up them slaves. It's not Africa, I know, but it's, it's close. Pack up them slaves, put them in the fucking hold of some fucking ships, ship them over here as cheap as possible, put them in shipping containers, who the fuck cares? Zip them over here to the United States, give them a free pass, just put them right on a fucking plane and send them right to whatever fucking city where big American businesses are set up so they can fire off or lay off all their fucking employees and then bring in the refugees. Cheap labor. It'll save these companies on their fucking labor cost. It'll save them millions per quarter. Do you understand that? And that will make the CEOs so much in, 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 in bonuses. That'll make the fucking stockholders happy. That'll make BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard happy. Won't make American workers happy. And it probably won't, in the end, it won't make the Palestinians happy. But that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is if you challenge it, if you question it, you're a fucking Nazi because you hate the Jews. Somehow. That, that's where we're at. That's where we're going with this. Anything that you do from now on with any topic means you're a Nazi and you hate the Jews. That's just how, that's how broken our system is now. If you can't stand the idea that they are bombing children and bombing babies, you are a Nazi, clearly, and you hate the Jews. Because the Jews have the right to self-defense. There's no more conflict going on except in Palestine. And if Israel withdraws from Palestine, as they should, it's not going to continue. They're not going to follow them out there and beg them to keep bombing them even more. So it's over. Israel has a right to self-defense. The concept here, the way they're spinning this is, They have to commit genocide and wipe out all the Palestinians off of their border, which is the divide between, God, between Palestine and Israel. They have to commit genocide and wipe all these people out because they're afraid eventually they might act up again. Ergo, they have a right to um, preemptively defend themselves. That is quite literally what they're saying. And if you disagree, you're a Nazi and you hate the Jews. Now, I mentioned the last American vagabond and Ryan Christian. Um, Ryan Christian. Um, dude. Uh, he's quite open about being on the side of the Palestinians and he's doing some pretty good work. However, he is from time to time engaging in the disinformation campaign that is, oh, well, Hamas took over Palestine. Hamas isn't looking out for the interest of the Palestinian people. The Palestinian people would be better off without Hamas. Hamas, therefore, should be Regime changed, which, of course, is what Bibi Netanyahu wants and, and Biden wants and, uh, of course, the Palestinian authorities want so they can move their fucking plantation operation over to Gaza and make more money because now they run more slaves for Massa, which is Bibi Netanyahu. And part of the way he does, they do that is by promoting the idea that what happened on October the 7th was allowed by Israel to happen. Because, of course, they are the most advanced technological uh, surveillance system in the world. And the IDF would never have been taken off guard, caught off guard, 
by the orcs on the other side of the fence. So ergo, they must have allowed it to happen because they want this to take place. And he's going to continue to promote that idiotic concept. In spite of the fact that a day or so ago, they published something on their website by a guy who just completely shatters that idiotic fucking storyline, that idiotic theory. And he shows it for what it is. And he says the exact same thing I've been saying for the last two weeks, three weeks. Seems this narrative was being, you know, spoon-fed to the alt communities. <laughs> I'll share that with you. But for, for the most part, what he's doing is all right. He's going over, he spent, I just spent two hours watching to see when he said this. I found a video where he talks about it. I found a video that's titled to this end, but it doesn't talk about that at all, even though it's clickbait, it looks like it says this. But then I did video, I found a video, found a video where he actually explains this shit from two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, a week ago. And uh, it's, it's um, but we'll talk about all that. We'll get some news and some updates on what's going on. And I just love this. I'm sorry. You, it's, you can't say it's not accurate. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. Let's talk about that to start with. This is where I got the quote. Arab, new Arab. Yesterday, Israel and allies move on from Sinai plan for Gaza displaced as Egypt holds its grounds, diplomats say. Egypt hasn't got enough big business. They've already got enough cheap fucking labor because they're a neoliberal run dictatorship. They don't need more cheap labor. Besides, all that will do is undermine fucking Al Sisi's hold. And you know what? Our last dictator got kicked the fuck out of Egypt. He's worried about that. Israel and its allies are pushing for new plans for where Palestinians forcibly displaced by Israel's brutal air and ground campaign might be moved to Egypt after, I mean, moved to after Egypt repeatedly rejected plans to relocate them to the Sinai Peninsula. Egyptian and other diplomatic sources in Cairo have repeatedly said, reportedly said, Plans are being put forward to offer people displaced from Gaza residence permits and employment opportunities in the United States and willing European and Arab countries, as Egyptian diplomatic sources told the new Arab sister site, Al Arabi Al Jihad, Jadid, on condition of anonymity. Priority would be given to residents from the northern area of the Gaza Strip is the word. I'll post a link to this down below. I don't know how bad it is in terms of stuff. So, uh, big business wants their cheap labor. And there's a whole bunch of cheap labor. And they're desperate. And they can be trained. <laughs> and they don't have unions. They don't speak English. Shit. Bring them on, says American Big Business. This is what I also mentioned earlier. Tomas says, Gaza will only be governed by its own people and no authority except for Palestinians. A senior official of Palestinian resistance movement Hamas has rejected claims by Israel and some of its Western backers about the Gaza Strip being governed by any party except its own people after the end of the ongoing Israeli war. Uh, Osama Hardin, Hardin, Osama Hardin, who was Hamas's representative in Lebanon and also a member of the group's Politburo, made the remark in Sunday press conference in Beirut. Quote, We say to the American administration and the criminal leaders of the occupation that Gaza will only be governed by its own people and there will be no political or security authority except for the Palestinians there. What does there mean? There means no fucking Palestinian authority and no Israeli authority. 
His remarks came after U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said earlier this week that when the Israeli war in Gaza ends, the territory should be unified with the occupied West Bank under the administration of the Palestinian Authority. That's one of the three options of that plan they just can't seem to get away from. On Saturday, however, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu opposed the return of Palestinian Authority to Gaza, underscoring the growing divergence between the regime and the U.S. over the issue. Uh, 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 says BB. No. We're not paying the House Orc extra money to oversee. We don't want the Bantistans in Gaza. We want all of it. We want to erase Palestine from the map entirely, says Bibi Netanyahu. And I'm going to show you in a few seconds how his time is... His, his time is short, and I'm not the only one saying this. Quote, we are a free people who do not accept guardianship from anyone. <laughs> and our blood and our lives will be the price for our freedom. So save yourselves the trouble of thinking and think about how to get down from the tree before you burn. Hamden said, his name is Hamden. I, my eyes are so bad, I'm sorry, I can't read. He also said the neo-Nazis in Israel committing, committed the massacre at the Baptist Hospital in Gaza City on the 17th of October, in which about 500 people were murdered and 600 civilians and children were injured. The world at that time stood by and did not question the occupation, nor did it hold its criminals accountable. And he's talking about the fact that now, out of nowhere, because nothing was done by the world in general, when they hit that fucking, when they launched that fucking, those, that, that bomb from the goddamn plane, and it slightly missed the hospital, but it hit the fucking parking area where a bunch of people were sitting outside being treated or waiting to be treated, and it killed 500 people. You saw the devastation. <laughs> and Israel tried to say it was, a, it was a rogue bottle rocket fired by fucking Gaza. Um... After that, there was some, you know, of course, outrage by human beings in the United States who were actually human fucking beings, not the rabid Zionist apologists who are all over the goddamn place now, because let's face it, Hasbro pays them. Or let's also face it, because they know if they take the other side, their Zionist fucking supporters. The support from the Zionists who up there, the, the paymasters, will withhold support. And so too will big business now. Right? Because what do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it now? So um, humans, and I, I mean that, if you're on the wrong side of this at this point, you don't qualify. And it's not a, it, listen, I'm, I'm sorry. It is not a matter of, of perspective. It's not a matter of information. It's not a matter of you were either a human or you were not. And you say, well, Scott, that's very dismissive and you're, and you're dehumanizing them. You're goddamn fucking right I am. Because at some point there has to be a fucking red line. All these people running around bitching and moaning about this fucking movie not being shown in all the theaters because the damn liberals because oh my god look there's two or three hundred children who have been kidnapped and taken over to Mexico and this guy shows he's going to Mexico to big guns he's going to shoot him he's going to save a kid yay but what about my other friends okay and he puts him off and the, and the movie ends with him going back into Mexico save another kid from being raped 4,000 fucking children have been blown to pieces, you fucking simpletons, and you don't give a shit. Fuck you. Do not eat that. <sighs> you don't care about kids. You only care about white kids. 
It's one of the two. <laughs> Sorry. Just lost half of my fucking far my 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 my, my alt right guys on that one. Sorry. Right. <sighs> Times like these people need standards. And either you're a fucking human or you aren't. Times like these, times like COVID showed everyone, showed people who you were, what you stood with, who you stood with. People on the left calling me fucking alt-right because I'm a COVID skeptic, because I'm logical, because I look at the shit and, inter and, and, and investigate the shit myself. Don't do your own research, for God's sake. You're not a doctor. Just do whatever Anthony Fauci tells you to do. Fuck you. I could tell them, fuck you. Now those brothers and sisters who stood with me on the COVID line, on the right side of fucking history, calling me a fucking Nazi because I think maybe, maybe Israel shouldn't be fucking launching hellfire missiles at children. Maybe wiping out all of Gaza so Israel can steal the fucking land they have coveted for decades isn't a good idea. And I'm a Nazi for that. You see the hypocrisy here? We'll talk about more hostages, hospitals being bombed in the future. In a few minutes in the future. <laughs> I'm going to uh, favorite these as some of these because I know they're chewing up my, whatchamacallit. Here's a long video done by The Last American Vagabond. And I've gone through this and it's actually pretty good. Um, in terms of, uh, he's, he's touching base on a lot of things. I, wa I watched three hours of it. <laughs> and I can, I can honestly recommend it. This one, uh, I can't recommend at all. This one's from October 24th, two weeks ago. Examining the Israeli false flag evidence. I think it's a wrap-up from October the 17th, but for some reason, I guess what he does is he puts his, his gems, his gold, his, his in, in behind a paywall until it's old news, and then he releases it, hoping to get some fucking ads or donos out of it uh, to the common folk. Notice that, 5,351 views, 174 upvotes. Only 174 thumbs up. Interesting, right? Have a listen. Now, one more point I think is interesting, and Version is a point this out. He says, there is no conceivable way that all the highest level and advanced border protection and surveillance technology in the world all failed simultaneously. The borders of Israel are the most guarded and watched place on earth. I agree with that. The soldiers at the ready to defend and, and attack, the mo at, at, attack the moment anything passes the wall. This is the main question everybody should be fixated on because it would mean that everything we're all arguing about is under false pretenses. Please ask questions. Don't be sycophant for war criminals. And he just points out this article from March 30th, 2023. Okay. <laughs> so his, his thing is, it's a false flag. At least it was... Whenever the fuck this guy put this thing up. I'm sorry, but he looks like Rasputin. He, is he trying to go for the Rasputin look? I don't know. He's got some fucking, some, some kind of like things hanging around his neck. I, I don't know. Maybe he's wearing a fucking, is that a, is that a pentagram? Show? I don't know what the fuck he's got. <laughs> so I told you, honestly, this is worth watching. I'm going to get rid of this now. It's fucking more than three hours. Uh Talking about 200 doctors, 50 journalists, 100 UN staff, 4,500 kids and 10,000 civilians killed by Israel in one month. Um, very good. It's a very good, concise, believe it or not, wrap up of a whole bunch of issues. 
including they're using fucking uh, human shields. Israel's using human shields again, and we're recently caught video using human shields. A lot of really good information here, specifically, um, he spends a bit of time talking about how um, people like us are being demonized by corrupt goddamn officials, by their compliant fucking police, the compliant police state, by, of course, media outlets and social media places shadow banning us or even banning us outright if we say the wrong things about glorious Israel, but also being turned on by uh, all sorts of folks out there in the alt-right and to some degree the alt-left. Um, because we simply say, which is, which is obvious, which is the position of the vast majority of the civilized fucking world out there. Um, and that is, this has to stop. And investigations have to happen into why. Now, I've been saying for a long time, so, he, so I, I strongly recommend that one. If you want to go watch the other one, go watch the other one. It's on his bitch shoot channel. The one I just showed you. And he's going to go on and, and some more bullshit um, evidence, quote unquote. But I want to, as I've stated, I want to address... That stupid fucking evidence, which is, of course, a supposition. We are going to suppose that glorious Israel has so much power over the borders and that fucking stupid fence that keeps the quote unquote orcs on the other side, <laughs> that, that nothing like this could ever fucking happen because there's no way they could fucking strategically... Uh, outsmart the Israelis. What they did was they fired 2,000 fucking rockets all of a sudden, all at once, over here, and everybody was looking over here, looking over here, looking over here, and they went in. They attacked, the very first video I did on this, I showed you. They fucking cut holes with charges, either in the wall where it was a wall, but mostly in fence, just fucking metal, just a little chain link fence. You take that shit in the can, you go, shh, 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 you ignite it, poof, it's gone. The fence piece falls out, and you go through. And I showed you. At most, 500 meters from the fence, <laughs> where the fucking outposts were, the military outposts that they targeted. 500 meters. And as soon as all the Israelis and all the focus was on, oh my God, Iron Dome, look, they got 2,000 fucking rockets over here. As soon as everybody was focused on that, chink, simultaneously nine holes, simultaneously, all up and down the fucking west side of Gaza, east side of Gaza, <laughs> the fence, mostly fence, I think two holes in, the, in a wall, were blown. Poof. And then people in trucks and dirt bikes. How long does it take a dirt bike to travel 500 meters? That's five football fields. How long does that fucking take? Hmm? It doesn't take long. It takes seconds. Matters of seconds. And then they were all on those fucking... They knew exactly where the goddamn outposts were, the military outposts were, and that's what they targeted. How the fuck would they, how would they respond? Their, 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 their vast superiority. <laughs> how are they going to deal with that? They were all sitting in those fucking outposts going, oh my goodness, look at the TV. Oh wow, look at all those rockets. What the fuck? They had no idea what just happened 500 meters away, five football fields away. And the fact that there were 70 dudes in that one fucking hole on dirt bikes and fucking trucks at 40 miles an hour coming across that fucking little no man's land. They had no idea. Until. And you go, it couldn't possibly have happened. It did happen. <laughs> it, it did happen. It couldn't possibly have put all those people together to lie about weapons of mass destruction. It did happen. And it showed exactly what I said it showed. 
And the problem for Israel is, and the problem for the fucking military leadership is, and the problem for the political leadership is, as soon as this thing in Gaza is over, they know they're gone. Which is why so many people in Israel, so many political writers, so many politicians, so many Knesset members are saying, the reason BB and the fucking Likudniks are, are continuing with this is political. It's political. They know they can't take the whole of fucking Gaza. The rest of the world won't stand for it. And to Ryan's credit, in the video, I will recommend him post a link to down below. <laughs> he accurately points out the world is turning on them. Their allies are turning on them. That's why when I was watching a little bit of football yesterday and then Florida State game on Saturday, I kept seeing all these fucking ads. Oh, the strings are playing and there's people and there's this beautiful Israeli people and they're living lives and they're good white people. <laughs> and little, the little blue fucking square. Oh, show, use your little blue square. Show the world you support. You support Israel against the terrorists. And then it showed a whole bunch of influencers, white people, happy and smiling, with little blue squares next to their name. I support Israel's genocide. I support bombing fucking children. Because I'm a good American. Because I believe in humanity. I believe in bombing the orcs. And killing babies. They paid for advertising. And they're paying for advertising because the fucking worm has turned. And they know it. If you're on the wrong side of this at this point, I'm sorry, it's just a goddamn fact. If you're on the wrong, if you were on the wrong side of the fucking COVID bullshit a year into it, I'm sorry. You, 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 if you're still running around screeching about masks and demanding unvaxxed people die because they can't get to a hospital because they're unvaxxed, I'm sorry. You're just not a fucking human. Just I, that's all there is to it. So I recommend watching this one. Uh, this one, not so much. This one, look at this. Evidence of deadly Israeli false flag mounts. <laughs> That's not a fucking false flag. He doesn't talk about false flag stuff in this video. In this video, he talks about the fact that they were... Sh All he does is he reads the Intercepts fucking article. And I've talked about that when it came out. And it's a good article. But there's others. He doesn't mention Mondo Weiss. He doesn't mention Harats. He just reads one article, and it takes him 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is, to do it. So, and there's no, there's no false flag shit in there. There's nothing. It's not a false flag. They were just killing fucking Israeli civilians because of the Hannibal Directive and because they were terrified. So I don't recommend this one. You can find it yourself. It's on this fucking page. This one I'll provide you a link to. Here's something interesting, even though this is his opinion. Here we go on October the 10th. This is, I can't hardly pronounce it, Enlakesh, Enlakesh, Robert Enlakesh, whatever his fucking name is. I don't know. Truth versus the conspiracy in the Israeli regime. Israel's real goal in Gaza. I'm going to read this whole section for you. An inside job or tremendous failure. Because I want you to hear somebody else writing a couple days ago what I've been saying for quite some fucking time. And this guy is a professional journalist. And, believe it or not, this is the last American vagabond. If you don't know, The Last American Vagabond is run by Ryan Christian. By the way, if you go to The Last American's main page, 
uh, the Last American Vagabond's main page. You see something very interesting. If you get past the current news, and I'll show you at the end of this, but if you get past the current news, um, they go into their uh, contributors. The, and it's on the front page. The very first contributor is Whitney Webb. And the most recent thing, I think, is in May that she contributed, or some shit like that, so something a while ago. There's a, there's a section for Whitney Webb, and then there's a section for Derek Bros, that piece of shit. Um, his most recent contribution was November the 10th. I don't think it's got anything to do with Gaza, remarkably enough, but there you go. Why would he still have Whitney Webb's up there front and center when you've got some people contributing right now who was second string, second fiddle. Tells you why he fucking got Whitney in the first place. Let me read a bit of this for you. <coughs> Excuse me. There are countless theories as to why October 7th Hamas attack was so effective and bloody. This has led to many people spreading claims online about various Israeli initiatives, including Gaza's gas fields and more. All of these theories are predicated on the belief that October 7th was an inside job, that it was pre-planned, and Hamas was either a willing participant in the conspiracy or served as a useful tool. For those who are not experts in the field, it seems rather fishy that most advanced military force in the Middle East could suffer such a destructive blow and allegedly sit back idly for five hours, in spite of the fact that you had so many videos of them shooting Palestinians while they were on the ground and Palestinians firing back and Israelis hiding behind fucking civilian vehicles. And of course, videos now coming out of Israeli tanks. And there's one video uh, of attach, Apache attack helicopters shooting people in that very field where that rave took place. And they themselves stated as reported by Mondo Weiss and fucking Haratz and fucking The Intercept, that they couldn't tell who was Palestinian and who wasn't. But they were told to, quote unquote, empty the belly and then return and get loaded back up with more ammunition, go back out. And this is exactly what they did. All those fucking, all those images of those burnt up cars. They weren't burnt up because fucking Hamas also had uh, a bandolier full of fucking nades and a bandolier full of fucking Molotov cocktails. They were burned up by Hellfire missile strikes because they didn't know what was going on. They said, fuck it, take out everything. Take out everything, which is what they did. Scorched earth on their own fucking people. <laughs> The claim that Egypt sent warnings to Israel in the weeks leading up to the attack is frequent, frequently used to support the theory of an inside job. But this line of reasoning doesn't work. Both Israel and Egypt have both denied these reports. While the only official to publicly claim as much has been the House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McFaul. By the way, Michael McFaul will be mentioned later. If you don't know who Michael, I mean McCall is. Uh, denials from he's he's a pure fucking neoliberal and uh, denials from Egyptian and Israeli officials do not prove these allegations false, considering both have vested interest in concealing such information. However, it bears noting that if Egypt had serious information that indicated a Hamas attack was imminent, we must also assume that U.S. intelligence must have known, as both sides closely coordinate. If this point were true, it would make sense. It would make the conspiracy even bigger. It would mean Israel and the U.S. by extension were given information that should have triggered an Israeli defensive posture. Hamas's complete annihilation of the Israeli Southern Command's defenses was unprecedented, and led to massive fighting in surrounding Israeli communities, as well as the killing or capturing of hundreds of soldiers. As a result. The Israeli intelligence, military, and political establishments are now almost certainly facing their final days, weeks, or months in power. 
After suffering such an enormous blow, there is no practical way the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu can survive. And remember what I've said before, he's facing criminal charges, and the only things keeping him from that fucking courtroom is the fact that he's Prime Minister. He doesn't only just lose his fucking cushy government paycheck, where he's steadily stealing fucking money and... and Feathering his own nests, which is why he's facing charges, but he goes to prison. He goes to fucking prison. After such an, suffering such an enormous blow, there's no practical way the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu can survive. If there's no regional war, and Israel still exists at the end of this war, the heads of Mossad, Shin Bet, and the Israeli military, and Netanyahu's government will likely all be forced to resign and or face investigations based on historical precedent. There's the link. Further, some 200,000 Israelis have been internally displaced due to the attack, and they will not feel safe enough to return to their settlements in the north along the Gaza peripheral periphery until the war has ended. And even after the war has ended, why would they feel safe? This thing shattered the illusion. Shattered the illusion of military and intelligence and surveillance superiority that people like Ryan Christian and other people are trying to promote. They're trying to build back up. On behalf of whom? Don't worry, Israeli people. They let it happen on purpose. Let what happen on purpose? Let them kill my fucking sister on purpose? That's not going to help. But that's the best they can come up with, the best propaganda they can come up with for dealing with the fact that they caught, got caught asleep at the wheel. The Israeli people, <laughs> once this is all over and Israel is forced to retreat back beyond the fucking lines, as it will happen, they're not going to take Gaza City. <laughs> once this happens, there's going to be continued investigations. And I say continue because they're already started. They, already st they were looking into the rape allegations. So we went back and looked at the fucking coroner reports on these things, and there's no goddamn signs of rape. They're trying to cover up the fact that there are tank shell parts in these people's houses. And there were no tanks being operated by Hamas. And remnants from Hellfire rockets. And fucking Hamas doesn't operate fucking drones with Hellfire rockets. So these investigations will come out. It will be proven what happened. And there is absolutely no way Bibi Netanyahu survives. And if he doesn't survive, his Likud party fucking followers, they also don't survive. His coalition party, his coalition government, they're all gone. They're all gone. They have one choice and one choice only. Destroy everything in fucking Gaza, kill all the fucking Gazans who won't fucking leave, including the babies, including the fucking children, and then turn to the fucking Israeli people and say, can I be forgiven? I am so sorry, but look what I have to offer. Look what I have given to you that you have coveted for so long. Now you can feel safe because there are no more Palestinians here. <laughs> That's all he can do. That's all he can do. And even if, even if, at that point, they say, you know what, sorry, you blew up too many fucking Israeli civilians. You gots to go. Even if that happens, Israeli big business, which is being hurt right now. He, he writes about that in this article as well. Israeli big business will pay off BB for providing the opportunity with the regime change of what's happening in, in, in Gaza. For all those, you know, glorious properties they can build their fucking casino resort town on. Little Havana on the Mediterranean, I guess.
<laughs> this kind of calamity affects every aspect of the Israeli regime's power, whether it's military or civilian. It has eroded uh, impen the impenetrable image of the Israeli military and so-called superior technology, both regionally and domestically. So, if October 7th was an inside job, uh, who exactly could have planned it from, this, from the inside? For this to work, we have to believe that the Israeli military in the south and the Israeli security and political establishment all collaborated to allow Hamas to launch an offensive that would end their careers. We also have to assume that they managed to keep this conspiracy from leaking in a circle of committed Zionists who would have conspired to damage their own self-interest. Israel's lucrative high-tech sector has been significantly affected by the Hamas attack, and the Israeli economy is in shambles. The war is expected to cost roughly $51 billion, according to preliminary findings. There is no gain for Israel. There is no gain for Israel, at least in the short term, without completely eradicating the final solution for their Palestinian problem, which will not be allowed to continue. Though one could argue that under the cover of war, the Israelis could attempt to pull off schemes they wouldn't usually be able to get away with, we are yet to see this materialize at this time. Now, they're going to go through this thing with the, the, the video from the guy from the border claiming that, you know, uh, they confiscated weapons. But he's going to explain in here that there's stuff going on. Uh, maybe that had something to do with something else and it was just coincidence. Who the fuck knows? The Israeli man in this video also assumes the Israeli military is capable of destroying Hamas with ease and characterizes that the Palestinian armed groups are as incapable of waging the attack on its own. That's the other thing. It must have been Iran doing it because the orcs from across the fence, they couldn't possibly have figured this thing out themselves. As he says, this is categorically false. The armed ring of Hamas, the Qassam Brigades, is an extremely capable ground force that is uh, delivering serious blows to the Israeli army, currently invading northern region, in, currently invading northern region of Gaza. Another unfounded claim circulating about October 7th attack <laughs> is there was no resistance from the Israeli side. In reality, there are copious amounts of documented evidence of Israeli police, security guards, and the army all engaging in gunfighters with the fighters from Gaza and Israeli tanks, helicopters, drones, and even airstrikes that were all called in, as I just told you a second ago. It should also be noted that the, that Israel, Israeli far-right activists have a vested interest in attempting to blame elements within the Israeli military, security and military establishment for orchestrating the attacks. This is an interesting idea that I hadn't seen. There are ardent supporters of Netanyahu's government. They try to shift the blame away from the uh, far-right government itself. This faction promotes a narrative that solely blames everyone but the current government. <coughs> Excuse me. The Israeli Prime Minister has already tried to blame the army for the attacks on the October the seventh. Um, very worthwhile article to go sit down and listen to. Of course, what he's referring to is Bibi Netanyahu, Netanyahu tossing people, uh, the military under the bus and the intelligence under the bus. Uh, I did a video on that when it happened. Um, and of course, what they're saying is this propaganda that's been deliberately fed into the alternative sphere uh, of, the, of, of the news cycles, both on the left and the right, and apparently being, when I say left and the right, obviously uh, Ryan Christian from The Last American Vagabond would re represent the left version of this. Um, the idea that this was, you know, uh, something that was concocted by Israeli intelligence and military and then fed into Gaza and to ha and Hamas, who works for them. It was a false flag. That puts the blame not on the political side of it, uh, but specifically on the intelligence and the military side of it. And of course, that deflects blame away from Bibi Netanyahu. Again, throwing everybody else under the bus, which is... <coughs> patently ridiculous. Here's an article uh, from the Times of Israel. 
This is from November the 9th. Talking about the fact that, well, we all know they were ordered to rape women's and rape dead bodies. They were ordered to rape dead bodies. What? That's what their fucking stupid propaganda is. Oh my God, they killed 40 babies and beheaded them and then they raped the dead bodies of women folk for some fucking reason. They're just orcs. Well, turns out, according to the Times of Israel, uh, there's no evidence of the female bodies having been raped. Now, they're trying to say there's no evidence because they weren't told to look for evidence. Um, just cause of death? I, I, I don't know what the, that's supposed to mean. And now they're saying because the bodies have been released or whatever, then there's never going to be any evidence of the actual rapes, the, the rapes that we say. What do they claim the rape evidence is? They claim the rape evidence comes from uh, people who are being held uh, in some dark dungeon somewhere, some hole somewhere, in Israeli fucking security fucking uh, torture chambers. Uh, some Palestinians have said, oh yeah, we were told to rape dead bodies and women. We got plenty of time for that. Um, of course, that's just, you know, a uh, long time ago when we were having the torture, the... Uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, extraordinary, extraordinary rendition and the uh, uh, what do they call it? They didn't want to call it torture. They had a different name for it. It's torture. We were having the discussion about that back when Dick Cheney was saying you got, you got to walk on the dark side for a couple hundred years because 9/11. That he did, by the way. Um, but it's a good thing his his daughters are. His, you know who I saw fucking being honored yesterday at a football game um, George W. Bush came out and flipped the coin in honor of in honor of the service members because it was you know Veterans Day weekend kind of thing service members he killed 5,000 of them by sending them off to Iraq and Afghanistan because of what his vice president and his cronies did. And Bush knew that. By then he knew it. And he's being honored for his support of the fucking service men and women of the in this country. It's nice. Anyway, I saw him flip a coin uh, for a football game, started his football game off. Anyway, I lost track of what I was talking about. Uh, their whole fucking the story is based on torture statements from people who are being tortured. And they're not even, I think one of them was recorded, but the rest of them um, were just, yeah, he said this, and then he said they did this, and then he agreed that they did this. So it's not even something someone said during a torture session. Uh, it's complete bunk. It's complete bullshit. And of course, here they are at the Times of Israel, explaining to you uh, why there's no evidence uh, of this. So, uh, what did I want to show you? Was it this one? Last American Vagabond. <laughs> I'm just busting his balls today. Um, traveling the world, writing what the people need to know. It's good work if you can get it. Look at that. The Serena Shem Award. He's so fucking proud of that stupid thing. Jesus. The Serena Shem Award. Supported by the Open Society Foundation. Um, I wanted to show you this real quick. He's, he's got some good stuff here. And this is where that article was, that, that video was that I mentioned you can go look at. Um, some obvious stuff. Here's the article of the week. The new jab is bad for you. No shit. Uh, but look at this. 
this is um, this is his website front page. That's the daily wrap up. That's the article of the week, and then here are his writers: Whitney Webb, first and foremost. The most recent was May of 2023. May of 2023, half a year ago. And Derek Bros is behind her on November the 10th, 2023. Why is that? <laughs> Why exactly had he brought Whitney Webb in in the first place? I'm not going to post any of these fucking links. You can find this shit yourselves. <laughs> uh, your tab crashed. I don't care. Um, okay. There we go. That's where I found that. Come on now, sing with me. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cheap labor. When do we want it? Now. There you go. Um, that's going to be my thumbnail. Uh, I'm, I got to go out there and, and, and move earth and uh, set those pavers for my next door neighbor who I've known for, oh, I don't know, a week and spoken to for a total of mm, seven minutes. Think globally, act locally. Anyway, I thank you for your time. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I will be doing something later on this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit more in terms of production value. Um, I need to learn how to edit if I'm doing all this and I'll continue. I, I noticed I was watching a thing on DSP and his shit just, it always stayed the same. And it's this long fucking documentary about this dumbass. What a toxic piece of crap he is. But um, I told you I'm going to try to mention DSP in every video. And uh, why, I don't know. Um, I'm getting old, I guess. But, but... I noticed that, you know, one of the big drawbacks, one of the big things that, quote unquote, detractors would say is he never changed anything he did. And there's old DSP talking to people this year, and, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years and you're going to give me credit. And I'm like, I can see a little of myself in DSP, which is the only reason I think he's still around. You know, people go, God damn, he's an asshole. Wait a minute. <laughs> One of the big things they say about him, the detractors, is, yeah, he's been doing it for a long time, but he hasn't fucking progressed at all. He's doing the same thing, you know, over and... And I'm going, yeah, that piece of shit, how lazy is that? And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> so I got to start putting some more effort into this stuff. Uh, either that or I got to go into the landscaping business and just, you know... By a wheelbarrow and a better shovel and I gotta do <laughs> I gotta do something. Anyway, um I I'm not entirely shitting on fucking uh mm -hmm. Ryan Christian. <laughs> and I don't know whether or not he I, I watched that whole three hour thing, and the reason I watched that whole three hour thing was to see whether or not he's gonna continue pushing it. He does interject it a little bit here, a little bit there, just a one line thing and a one line thing, but he really doesn't harp on it. You know, the idea that it was a false flag event that they because Hamas is owned and operated by fucking Israel. Um and I give him credit for this. He's one of the few out there um, who come right out and say, uh, you know, that it's got to be a two-state solution. I hate people. I don't hate people. It irks me when people, and sometimes well-meaning people, have been convinced that there's no possibility. The two-state solution is dead. It has to be a one-state solution, and the one state has to be one that's open to everybody, and everybody is equal, and everybody is free within the one state. And whenever I hear that, I say, what's it going to be called? The one state. And they always say the same thing. What does it matter? Okay, we'll call it Palestine. <laughs> Well, you know, that's not going to happen. You call it Israel. 
Well, yeah, but it's free and open for everyone like Israeli democracy is now. Almost a million Palestinians are Arabs, live in, quote unquote, Israel now, and they're second class citizens. Now, what do you think it'll be when it's one state solution? Do you think all of a sudden all the Israelis will be like, you know what, we've treated you guys badly. Go ahead and move back into your homes that you lost during the Nakba. Or Nakba 2, as it's being called now in Gaza. Please go right ahead. Please go back and move into your... No, that's not ever going to happen. So <laughs> the one-state solution is the only real viable solution. Wipe Palestine off the map and give it all to the Israelis. That's what you're saying. And somebody somewhere has either convinced you through the power of their fucking presence or you are just a Zionist infiltrator. There is no solution, first of all. The two-state solution isn't a solution. You know why? Do you know why? It presupposes an equation. There is no equation. There is one state trying to wipe out the other state. That's aggression. That's not an equation. It wasn't an equation when the United States illegally invaded fucking Iraq. And Afghanistan, for that matter. Because of Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9-11. These weren't equations to be figured out. Whoa, we gotta... These were wars. Wars of aggression. What's happening between Israel and Palestine is simply a war of aggression. There is no equation to it. So therefore, there's, there's no solution to it. Here's the only way it, you, you solve a war of aggression. <coughs> the international community condemns it until it stops. And there is punishment imposed on the state that's committing it. Meaning sanctions and boycotts and whatever and, and, and loss of diplomatic uh, contacts. And of course, Israeli businesses are then kicked out of the nations that they are making business in until the cost becomes too much for the government inside Israel. And they say, okay, we got to pull out of the West Bank. We've got to pull all of our settlers out of the West Bank. We've got to give the West Bank back to Palestine, which it is. We've got to give East Palestine back to fucking Palestine, which it is. And we have to quit fucking holding people back and, and closing fucking Gaza into the world's largest fucking ghetto. <laughs> it's not a two-state solution. There's no equation. There's no question. There already are two states, according to the June 1967 Accord. There are two states. Period. End of story. Um, and recognizing the two states, we don't, we don't understand that because we've constantly fed disinformation about Palestine never existing. Right? So, there are two states. The rest of the civilized world recognizes the fact that there are already two states. We just have to stop one from trying to wipe the other off the map. And it's not Palestine trying to wipe Israel off the map. That's the solution. That's it. Once we are civilized enough to recognize that Despite the fact that so many American businesses want their cheap labor and so many people who are influential in the United States just happen to also be Zionists. Uh, once we get past all that, uh, then we'll just simply recognize the fact that there are two states. Just like there's a Britain and there is a fucking United Kingdom and there is a fucking France. No one questions whether one exists or whether one doesn't. Just like there's a Canada and a United States. No one questions whether one exists and one doesn't. No one says, we got to deal with the, the what, what's the two-state solution for Canada and the United States? 
we got to find a one-state solution, which means the glorious United States just absorbs all of Canada. No, that's not a solution. That's not reality. The reality is there's already two states. And anybody in your sphere of, of, of reference who's telling you, oh, it's a one-state solution, and that will put an end to it, ask them, quite simply, what do you call it? What do you call it? And then you'll know where they stand, won't you? I thank you for your time.